Hey team, Dr. Jack Audie here, and in this video, I'm going to go through how silver staining works. Now, silver staining is this amazing technique that helped the discovery of Alzheimer's disease, that helped the discovery of how the brain works, and we're still using it today. So I'm going to jump into this amazing technique. So it's a method to stain proteins and nucleic acid, um, and it's used in histology, but also in uh, in vitro techniques where no cells are involved sometimes where it's just protein or just DNA or just nucleic acids, for example. So it's both a histological technique and a pure in vitro technique as well. So let's look at some histology. This is some beautiful images, and these are from 1930, some of these images here. Now, basically, they are the histology of brains from uh, uh, babies and infants, unfortunately, that died. Um, and they performed histology on these brains to look at the processes of neuronal development during these stages. Now, these, this is silver stain, and the black stain there, that's the silver and the silver stain. And here we can see a newborn brain, and this is uh, th these are their neurons. Now, neuronal connections are who you are, it's how you think, it's how you store memories, it's how you move, is the connections of these neurons. And what's amazing is you can see the development. These are different individuals. You can't obviously do silver staining on one individual over the time. It's all post-mortem. Um, but what we can see is that neuronal connectivity increases with age dramatically over these times. Now, I have experienced this in the last 18 months because I have an 18-month-old boy, and he has gone from a blob who can't smile or focus his eyes, who has no opinions, to a very opinionated, happy little boy who loves the lawnmower. So that is honestly, that is the result of this development of neuronal connectivity. It's absolutely amazing to see the histological reality behind this little personality being born into my son. It's amazing. I love it. Um, so what's going on here? Well, I mentioned that neurons and how the brain works is through neuronal connections, strengthening and weakening to change the computations that they are doing. Well, these connections uh, occur through this thing called synapses. And uh, ascend, uh, critically, we see these dendritic um, uh, dend dendritic spines here, these little blobs that stick off the dendrite, each of those represents a connection between two things. So here we've got the connection between uh, two neurons. Now, the interesting thing about the silver stain is it actually only stains one in a hundred neurons. It doesn't stain all the neurons. Now, that's really important. If we go back to this, if we were to see all the neurons, it would just be black. There are neurons everywhere. It's thick to the brim. But because we, we can only see one in a hundred neurons, Neurons, we see the space in between these neurons um, and it allows us to see one at a time, which is fantastic. So whenever we see this um, uh, dendritic spine here, know that there's another connection coming off here, but we just can't see that neuron. But it allows us to count the dendritic spines and see the, the formation of memories and connections and, and new movements and new ideas that all, all occur through the formation and strengthening and weakening of these connections. Now let's just put that to scale because silver staining is fantastic for tiny scales, for seeing very small things. So here are our dendritic spines and here is a human hair to the same scale. So we can see that you can absolutely see down to very, very tiny scales using the silver staining, which is an amazing attribute for a stain. Now, I mentioned it can also work in vitro techniques, and what I mean by that is just proteins in, in, a, in a liquid or nucleic acids in a liquid, we can then use silver staining as we analyze those proteins. So in this case, we've run proteins on a gel. I don't want to go into this, but basically this gel can sort proteins by size. So bigger proteins are up here, and smaller proteins are down here. So this is molecular weight over here. Small proteins down here, big proteins up here. And then pro proteins are invisible. Remember that? Proteins are invisible. So to see them, we do a silver stain, and it allows these big black blobs here. It allows us to see the proteins. What are we looking at right here? Well, these each of these lanes are amyloids. So amyloid is the protein associated with Alzheimer's disease. And amyloid has this unique thing where it sticks together. It's not unique, but it's rare, a unique feature where it sticks together. So actually what we can see here is a single amyloid protein and that we call a monomer. One mono means one, so it's a one mer. <laughs> 
So it's a monomer, a single amyloid. Here we can see a dimer. The two amyloids have stuck together. Now this process is essential for Alzheimer's disease. So it's pretty cool. In a flask, we are seeing the molecular processes that probably ultimately cause Alzheimer's disease. And that is these amyloid proteins sticking together. So um, you can see it's got twice the molecular weight. There's a molecular weight there in kilodaltons. And so this monomer has become a dimer and we've got twice the molecular weight. And up it goes, trimer, tetramer means four, pentamer means five, hexamer means six, seven, eight. These are collectively called oligomers, which means many mers, several mers stuck together. So we can see the process of amyloid sticking together in a flask by running it on this gel. That's what it's called, running on a gel which sorts the proteins by size and then staining it with a silver stain there. Um, and in fact, silver stains is how black and white photography worked for decades and decades and decades. This is the first black and white photo that contained humans. Here's uh, a man getting his shoe shined down there. Um, and so this is believed to be the first photo that contains humans. Now, critically, the blackness in here, the blackness in here, and... Oh, the blackness in here is all the silver stain, right? It's all the same silver stain going on here. So let's go through how this works. Here is silver nitrate. Now this is a salt form of silver. It's not metallical it's silver. You can't make any jewelry out of it. It is a salt form of, uh, of this metal with this uh, nitrate here. And it's soluble, so it floats around in a liquid. And when it's doing that, it's completely clear. You can't see it. However, metallic silver is opaque. You cannot see through metallic silver. So if you shine a light through it, it will block out the light. And when it's ground up into tiny little particles, it's not very shiny. It's more of a black powder when it's ground up into a tiny particle. Silver staining is essentially the process of turning this clear liquid into metallic silver to block out the light when we want it to and where we want it to. That's essentially what silver staining is. So this is how it works. Here's silver nitrate. Silver is positively charged metal. Nitrate is negatively charged iron. When you put it in water, much like most salts, it breaks up into its individual molecules form. So here's our water here. Now, part of the functionality of this is water is kind of pseudo-charged, and so it has negative ends and positive ends that are attracted to the negative nitrates and the positive um, uh, silver. And so it breaks it up, making it all very nice and soluble. Now, so how does the silver stain work? Now, I'm just going to focus on a silver molecule, but note that there's water molecules and ni nitrate molecules floating around here too. But here we have a silver um, atom, a silver atom right here, a silver ion floating around in the liquid. And here we have some DNA. Now, DNA is deoxyribose nucleic acid. So it's an acid. Now, acids donate hydrogen ions. So here we go. It's going to donate the hydrogen ion to the solution. Now, it was neutral. It gave away a hydrogen ion. So what happens? It becomes negative, right? So um, if you're neutral, if you're even, uh, if you have even money and then you give away some money, you have negative money. So if you have an even charge and you give away a positive, you're now negative. You're now negative. You have uh, a negative charge here. So the DNA is negatively charged. Now opposites attract, right? So positives attract negatives. There's electromagnetic force going on here. So these two molecules are going to attract each other. So the silver is going to come along and be attracted to it. Now, an important thing here is we still can't see it. It's still a, a silver ion, so we cannot visualize it. So what we need to do then next is after we've done the silver stain, we need to put an electron donor on. Now, formaldehyde is an example of this, but there's lots of other examples. So something that will give away its electrons. It's called a reducing agent, and it will donate its electrons to this reaction. So it's going to come along and donate its electron to the silver ion. Now, a positive plus a negative equals a neutral. neutral. So the silver loses its charge and actually becomes metallic silver. Um, and these can actually form tiny, tiny little uh, metallic silver crystals that are opaque. Light cannot get through this silver crystal. So it's now dark, right? So you can kind of see how silver is able to stain DNA, but it's also able to stain lots of other things. So it can stain nucleic acids because they have a negative charge because they donate their hydrogen ion. But proteins also have acidic side chains that can donate their hydrogen ions and become negatively charged and they've got other side chains as well that can interact with the silver molecule um, and so it can stain proteins as well which is what we saw in that amyloid blot there but lastly 
also impregnation reagents. So in that silver staining of the brain where we saw those neurons, what was the silver staining? Well, interestingly enough, what you can do is pre-soak the brain in a, a, a negatively charged reagent. Now that negatively charged reagent, which just means chemical, that negatively charged chemical is going to flow into the neurons. Now, here's the funny thing, and we're still trying to figure this out. It only flows into one in a hundred neurons. So the impregnation reagent, which is a negatively charged chemical, only flows into one in a hundred neurons. So now you've got a negatively charged um, chemical in one in a hundred neurons. So then when you incubate with silver nitrate, the positive silver ion flows into the neuron as well. Um, and flows into those negatively charged neurons preferentially and stays in those neurons through wash cycles preferentially in the negatively charged neurons that are full of this impregnation reagent. So then when you then convert it to the metallic uh, silver with the reduction agent that donates its electrons, you end up with one in a hundred neurons packed to the gills with uh, metallic silver crystals. And metallic silver crystals block light. So light cannot get through silver. So if you shine a light from the bottom, you end up with a very dark um, section of a neuron there. And that's how silver staining works. Um, and here's how we use it today. And here's a modern example. So this is a silver stained dendrite. And we can see the dendritic spines there. I've called it spins. Uh, I will edit that shortly. That should say spines. So here we've got dendritic spines along our dendrite, and each of those represents a connection to another neuron. So there are loads of connections to other neurons there. Think about how many neurons are inputting information into this one neuron. It's mind boggling how the brain works. So what we can do is that we can actually go along and count those dendritic spines to count how connected the brain is. Now, this is an Alzheimer's mouse. It's had a gene that causes Alzheimer's disease um, in humans inserted into it. Two genes, actually, the APP and the PS1 gene, um, have been inserted into this mouse to cause Alzheimer's disease. And when we go along and want to count the dendritic spines, what do we see? Way fewer dendritic spines. So it has lost neuronal connection in this, and that's going to cause neuronal dysfunction, reduced um, cognitive powers, and loss of memory. This was actually done in the hippocampus, which is the memory centers of the brain. So that's one of the uses for silver stain, uh, but there's many others, and we still do it today. It's absolutely brilliant. So thanks a lot, guys. That's uh, the silver stains. If you have any questions, pop them in the comments below, um, and like and subscribe and all that jazz.